as you probably know, I've been limping around um, the conference, having developed a, a trap nerve in my back, which I hope will soon be free. But um, in doing so, uh, the ministers have had to do a lot to, to cover me. I'm sort of reflecting, actually, on the uh, wonderful comments from the South African rugby captain, Sia Khaleesi, the other day, when he was up being asked about one of his team members who... Uh, one of his star team members who, who had failed to kick a couple of kicks during the game, and he, he just answered back and said, listen, it's a team game, you know, not everybody's performing at 100% of the time, and we've got other players in, in the team we can rely on to kick and to cover when people aren't uh, at their best. So I haven't been at my best for the last two days. I'm very grateful to my team, uh, politically and indeed from an officer level, uh, who've stepped up to the fore to cover those moments when I could have been and should have been on stage. I think we've just been asked to, to reflect on, on, on the conference. This is our second uh, conference, and we're entering the third year of this government. And it's been a, a pretty uh, tough two years for the government and, and for the island. I was thinking um, how, you know, when we, we came in, we came in and COVID was still very much at the fore, and one of the first jobs that we had to undertake was design an exit strategy for the island to take us out and to start our recovery. And no sooner had we done that, then of course uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and we saw a massive increase in energy costs and the resultant spikes in inflation and the cost of living and we had to design emergency packages uh, for many sectors, uh, many people on our island and of course made the decision at the time to freeze electricity um, prices. And alongside that also uh, design a scheme to contribute to the war effort that was going on in the Ukraine and play our part by taking refugees um, onto the island. And of course, alongside that, put together our plans from a diverse group of politicians to take the island forward. Uh, and in doing that on the back of uh, a lot of work that had been done by the Economic Recovery Group, which had been set up um, before the election. And now into our third year, I very much see this as a year of delivery for the government and, and for the island. And I think one of the things I think that has come out from this conference for me is that that delivery now is starting to happen. I've been hugely enthused by the announcements this morning from the Enterprise Minister that we are backing three key brownfield site developments, about 50 million pounds worth of construction activity that's gonna take place over the next three years, providing jobs uh, an economic income for the island, but also providing housing, retail facilities, and uh, uh, some new uh, shops and other facilities, sorry, retail facilities and office facilities for the island. And we're not gonna stop there. There are other schemes in the pipeline that we're actively considering. So we are going to deliver, we are serious about delivering on our brownfield site regeneration promises and getting regeneration underway properly across the island. And of course, you know, in the past, I think we've talked a lot about regeneration. Governments have talked about regeneration. And we have made some efforts and we've put down uh, new, new paving and new, new bits and pieces of small infrastructure. But if we are serious about delivering a better future, if we are serious about increasing our population and changing the demographics, serious, about the, the attracting new businesses, serious about the 5,000 new residents, then we have to be serious about delivery. And I think this conference and that announcement today demonstrates that this is a serious government that is tackling very serious issues. A lot of emphasis is, and a lot of discussion has gone on about housing and, and what the strategic direction is for housing on, on the island. We've set clear targets for the private sector, and I'm very confident that we will deliver the 1,000 new homes that, that, that have been promised in terms of uh, actual house building. Um, but we're also serious about ensuring that we have a proper strategic direction for the island in the future, particularly to look after those sections of the community who struggle, struggle to get on to the first time 
uh, buyers onto the property ladder struggle because they actually are in need of assistance with housing and perhaps struggle because towards the uh, end of their lives, towards their retirement years, that they need assistance with, the, with their living requirements. That's why I was delighted to be hearing today about the Housing Association and I'm delighted that the Council of Ministers is backing the Tolson report, which at least gives us a platform to move forward and the opportunities that a housing association could do uh, and can make to the island. Now we have to ask ourselves a lot of challenging questions about whether the island's structure with many multiple local authorities and many different setups around provision of housing is right for a modern island that is driving towards the future. So we are serious, though, about taking this forward. And even if we can't get everybody on board from the word go, I believe that we have and we can put in a platform uh, for the future that will mean the island has better strategic direction when it comes to, to housing, but more importantly, is delivering better outcomes for people. I think also during this conference, um, we've heard from a range of uh, speakers who have given us a real insight into potential opportunities for us to deliver on our, on our ambitions. The presentation this morning from, from the Treasury Minister, which was followed by our guest speaker, Jonathan Young, I think the Treasury Minister outlined some of the key issues that are facing him and facing us on a, as an island in terms of the day-to-day -day challenges of funding and financing. But it was also interesting listening to Jonathan Young from London, who was giving a very sort of international perspective on, on the reality that actually when you benchmark the island against international performance, we are in a very, very good position and have been performing very well. I think the key message that came out this morning was are we willing to put our money where our mouth is and invest in our island and continue to invest in our island to bring it up to modern standards to create this modern, secure, vibrant and sustainable island that we very much set out at the heart of our island plan. But we're serious about doing that, and we're serious about developing infrastructure, and that's why it was also good to have people like Mott McDonald uh, here today to tell us about potentially better ways, more focused ways of delivering on that and making sure that our infrastructure, our big project infrastructure, is fit for purpose. And there's a lot for us to consider as we build the island out, and we know there are areas of infrastructure around the island that need considerable investment, the airport being one, but arguably our ports and harbours in the coming years will also need serious uh, investment as well. The critical point that Mott MacDonald and others have been making, and, and Jonathan Young was making this morning, is there are ways to finance it, this. There are ways, innovative ways, to deliver on big projects um, for the island that will take us forward. And I think that part of the government's challenge as we seek to seriously deliver on our uh, ambitions to grow the working population, to grow the population, to increase government revenues, and deliver on our energy, our green energy commitments, is to make sure that we are serious about finding the money and the finance that is needed to do this. And whilst we're talking about um, energy, I know the Manx Utilities Authority were here today doing a presentation on their renewable energy plans. We're serious. We are serious about getting renewable energy onto the island for the future. And we have to do this. And I say not just the government, we, the community, you, everybody in this room, really needs to be part of that discussion, not only part of that discussion, but committed, I believe, to delivering on that as well, because this is not just about the here and now. You know, we have 10 years or so before that power station, before the gas turbines effectively are, for all intents and purposes, turned off. And we need to be ensuring that we have placed not only ourselves, but future generations in a, in a better position. And that's why this government was serious when we said we needed 20, at least 20 megawatts of renewable energy onshore by 2026. Now, I appreciate, you know, in delivering this, um, there will be lots of views, there will be opposition, um, and there will be other, many other factors that people will, or ideas that people will have that may come into to play. And I think that's why I'm so keen for this type of event to carry on, because I think this conference 
as last year, has really given us food for thought. I do believe it's given us a chance to explain our position. I believe it's given you uh, a chance to understand that position and challenge that position, but also I know behind the scenes there have been some incredible conversations about how things can be approached differently uh, and in a better way. So that's really going to be the challenge for us. And I think we should never forget, of course, that for me and for, for many others and for you in this room, of course, it's about now, the here and now, and driving the businesses that we have forward. But it is also about creating a better future. And that's why I was absolutely delighted that we included the youth in this year's program and that we saw we had our youth conference as the very first part of the, uh, the, the two-day sessions. And I hope that... Uh, benefit has been achieved by that and, and that we have sent a message that uh, as well as uh, the sort of senior politicians and senior business and community leaders and individuals in the community discussing these serious matters and serious matters of delivery, we should never forget ultimately that what we're doing this for is to ensure that future generations can benefit from our legacy. So I hope that uh, everybody has uh, enjoyed the conference. I will be interested to know um, from people whether or not they have got value. We will obviously consider how we deliver this uh, again in, in the future, and I hope we get to deliver this in the future. But for me, this is uh, serious times with serious challenges, but I hope the demonstration from this conference has been that we are a serious government who are intent on delivering on our commitments. Now, we want to do that, but we also need help doing that. We also need to know what innovation is available and what ideas people have to help us get to um, that point. So I'm optimistic that some of the difficulties of the first two years of this administration, I hope, have been overcome. Uh, and clearly these are uh, challenging days. I mean, challenging days in, in so many different areas, uh, including from a sort of global economic perspective, including changes in direction that we heard yesterday from the likes of Rishi Sunak that may have thrown a bit of confusion into how uh, we are approaching renewables. But we're a committed government. We've set out a firm, clear plan. I believe that if we can get behind that plan and we can work together to find the best ways to deliver, then we will not only have been a serious government, but we will have also seriously delivered for the island. So thank you very much for your contributions, and I look forward to continuing to engage with all of you over the coming months and years. Thank you.